So first let's take the 2-EPD case, which is the alkyne, the compound with the triple bond shown here. So at that carbon, we see we need to form two sigma bonds, right? One off to the left here, and one off to the right. And to do that, we would need two hybrid orbitals. Uh, we would need one for the bond at right and one for the bond at left. To get the two hybrid orbitals, we take the four simple atomic orbitals and we say, well, we need two orbitals out, so we'll need to put two orbitals in. And we're going to pick the lowest energy simple atomic orbitals, which would be the 2s and one of the 2p's. Remember, we only need two hybrid orbitals out, so we only take two simple atomic orbitals in the first case. That's why we call this sp hybridization. In the case of two electron pair domains, you'll see sp hybridization. That means we've taken one s and one p orbital and made hybrid orbitals out of them. So these pink lobes here are the sp hybrids, and that's why I label the text in pink. Now since we only took 1s and 1p to form those two sigma bonds, we have two p orbitals left over, and that's why I label this text in green and blue. These blue and green lobes that you see here are the leftover p orbitals that can participate in pi bonding. And as you can imagine, another, another carbon atom over here probably has two available p orbitals as well, and what we'll get is pi bonding between those two and that's where the multiple bonds come from. So you can see that a lot of the real subtle electronic details of where the bonds are located in space and their character in terms of orbitals is really illuminated with this hybridization approach. So we saw that we needed two electron pair domains. That's how we saw sp hybridization at that carbon. And then noting that we only use two of the simple atomic orbitals, we see that we have two orbitals left over for pi bonding. Now let's jump to the three electron pair domain case and you'll see analogous reasoning here. So again we need three sigma bonds for this structure with three electron pair domains and that that correlation the three and the three is not always true it's not necessarily true but ninety percent of the time you'll find it's true and in fact in at the end of today's lesson and in future lessons uh... will uh... lectures i should say we'll look at uh... cases where that's that's not the case and you'll learn to think about those cases in sort of a different a different way but anyway getting back to this problem we have three electron pair domains three sigma bonds and so we need three hybrid orbitals out of this in order to get three hybrid orbitals, we need to, to hybridize three of the simple atomic orbitals. When we do that, we have what's called sp2 hybridization. It's called that because we use 1s and 2p orbitals in order to form the three pink hybrids shown here. And remember, these are considered atomic orbitals, so we combine these with other hybrids to make sigma and sigma star orbitals. So for a typical molecular orbital diagram of a simple carbon-carbon bond, what you might see is something like this. An sp3 orbital, which we'll talk about in a second. Well, actually, let's, let's call it an sp2 orbital just for the purposes of this discussion. Interacts with another sp2 orbital and the actual molecular orbitals of the compound will be a sigma bonding and a sigma star antibonding orbital. And typically, each orbital will bring only one electron in. Hence, we end up with two electrons in the bonding orbital. So this is an example of how the hybrids combine to form the molecular orbitals, which are really the nuts and bolts of actual organic molecules that we can actually get our hands on, as opposed to just the atoms themselves and just the hybrid orbitals. Again, in this case, we see that the other simple AO, which is this 2p orbital in blue here, remains intact. And importantly, notice that the three hybrids form a trigonal planar structure, which is what we would expect from Vesper theory, and the remaining 2p orbital is perpendicular to the plane formed by the, um, 
by the hybrids. So the plane formed by the hybrids, we might draw it something like this. And you can see that the p orbital is pointing straight up and down perpendicular to that plane, which is sort of coming out at us, actually, in that diagram. And you can see sort of the correspondence between the locations of the sigma bonds about this carbon and the locations of the end of the hybrid orbitals. They both kind of point to the edges of a triangle, which is what we would expect from the Lewis structure. The final case of hybridization, we have four sigma bonds about a carbon, and so we need to use all four simple, whoops, all four simple atomic orbitals in order to form the hybrids that we would actually use for bonding in this case. So we would take all four orbitals, that's called sp3 hybridization because we've taken the s and the three p's and hybridized them all, and all four of those orbitals are being used to form these hybrids. So the hybrids, you can see the larger lobes, don't worry too much about the little nubs kind of on the back side there, but those hybrid atomic orbitals are shown for you here. And notice there's nothing left over. And we don't need anything left over because there are no pi bonds around this carbon. It's already got its full uh, octet of electrons, and it's, it's good to go. As a result, we don't need to worry about any remaining 2p atomic orbitals. And these hybrids, just like we saw before, can interact with hybrids on other atoms to form um, covalent bonds. The concept of hybridization and orbital energy is really important. So remember, as I've said before, I think a couple of times now, there are two sides to every orbital. There's its shape and its energy. They're somewhat related, but you should learn everything you can about both the shape and energy of orbitals and really understand the origin of the shapes and, and energies of orbitals. So in the case of hybridization, the orbital energy is derived from the energy of the simple atomic orbitals and the amount of s and p, what's called character, that we put into each orbital. So, say we have three p orbitals and one s. Hopefully you're used to seeing this by now. These are the energies of the simple atomic orbitals. If we hybridize one s and one p, then the sp hybrid that results, which is this top guy here, will be right smack in the middle of the S's and the P's because it's 50% S and 50% P. Hence, the reason it falls perfectly in the middle of the S and P orbitals. Now, if we were to take two P orbitals and one S orbital, as in this case, so that corresponds to there, if we were to take um, now 2p orbitals and 1s, well then we've raised the energy slightly because there's slightly more p character in there. So now we have, what, 33% s character and 66% p. Just take the sp2 and divide it by the total of three simple atomic orbitals that you use to get the 66%. And that higher percentage of p character raises the energy of the orbital unsurprisingly, right, because we're getting closer and closer to a pure p orbital, which would, of course, come in right at the same energy of the three levels I've drawn there.